Now you have you have said that uh, if if a politician, let's and it's a big if, sponsors thugs with weapons and money during an election, that they don't really have much control over what they do after the election. Now I would like to ask you, in view of the allegations, because at this point they're just allegations, that uh, in, immediately after the robbery occurred, that these ca the cars that were involved that transported the robbers to the scene of the crime were, were domiciled in government house Elorin that weapons came uh, purportedly from a, a, a political aid to the governor of Kwara State. These are allegations. Uh, we, is it not, you know, uh, kind of enough to link the Senate president and the governor to the incident? Uh, from what I heard uh, from the clip, you must say the vehicle was given to him by the governor through the Senate president, who is their leader. And you go to the National Assembly, you go to, you see the members of the National Assembly, all of them empowering their communities. So if I give you a vehicle, am I supposed to control what you are doing with the vehicle? But if, for instance, like what I also heard, that after the incident, the chief of staff, these are allegations, I'm not, I'm not private, it's police that changed the number and removed the, you should also be called to question. But I don't see the link of the robbery. But if the, if, 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 the, if, the, if the weapons that were purportedly used to kill over 30 Nigerians at that particular bank that day were seized from a political aid to the governor of Kwara State, and that if the, if the allegations hold up, we don't know, but if they hold up and the car was domiciled in government house Ilorin, is that not a clear enough link well, to... Of course to, it should be prosecuted. That's what the law says. He's, he doesn't have any immunity. immunity. The, it's only the governor that has immunity. Anybody who commits an offense must be tried. If it's traced that the guns were supplied by him, and of course, he's not above the law. He's subjected to the law. But my quarrel, my worry, is linking the Senate president to the robbery. I'm not, I don't know him. I don't speak for him. But the point I am making is that Granted that politicians have supporters, followers, talks, call them any name. He is not alone in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, there have been killings in this country by political supporters and talks. You heard what he said, that their own is when there's a, 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 maybe a statement in an election, they go there to this. The, uh, disorganizing. Well, we, we've heard allegations around uh, potentially that the police forced suspects to give false statements. I'm going to ask you about that when we come back uh, from this break. Our viewers, please do stay with us. Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Standing by with me is Mr. Mike Ejiofor, a former director with the State Security Service. Now, we've been talking, of course, about the Ofa robbery and some of the controversy surrounding it, but uh, I, I want to ask you about some of the concerns that have been raised around whether or not our security agencies are being overly politicized. Uh, we've heard in recent days from uh, the new People's Democratic Party, NPDP, tendency of the All Progressives Congress uh, coming out and saying, look, uh, they're, they're not going to talk, uh, you know, kind of political uh, conciliation with the presidency anymore over the al al alleged uh, persecution of its members. Now you have the police essentially invite Senate President Bukola Sariki over this OFA matter, but then it's now rescinded and now they're saying he should respond as opposed to being physically present in the police station. Should there be this level of political influence on, our, on the nation's security agencies? I don't think so, because uh, the moment you politicize the security architecture process, you create more security problems. I'll give you an example. The Senate president was invited by the police, knowing full well that there was ongoing process at resolving the crisis between the AP, within, within the APC, because it's within the APC, the new PDP were trying to say, let us make peace. And the day, or a day before 
the scheduled meeting. You invite the Senate president. And that's what they raised on the floor. The spokesman of, I was watching him yesterday, the spokesman of the new PDP in APC was saying that there's no uh, genuine effort on part of government. And what does this amount to? It creates more security problems. Don't also forget that most of the security challenges we are having in Nigeria are political. If only our politicians can play by the rule, security problem will go down. The security challenges will go down. But in a situation where you see there's no cordial relationship between the executive and uh, the legislator, it goes on and on and on. We've seen, we've they will seen. not deliver. On the promise, we've seen so much uh, intrigue around this relationship between uh, the Inspector General of Police and the National Assembly. Uh, we've seen it in, the, in Dino Malaya's case. Uh, we see it rearing its head now. We've, we've, we've seen this come up. And I want to ask you, in your view, do you believe that the kind of personality intrigues within the police force are undermining the credibility of the police force in doing their, their, uh, their duties? I'll say yes, outright, because uh, the way the Inspector General of Police is going about it, I don't like it. If you say you are going after the Senate President because possibly you were invited and refused to honor the invitation, you are not inviting the Senate President, you are inviting the whole National Assembly because he's the head of the National Assembly. And uh, why was it... But shouldn't, was, but shouldn't we divorce uh, Bukola Saraki as a person from, from him being the Senate President on, on issues of law and order? But Bukola Saraki, as the Senate President, deserves some respect. Mm. As number three citizen of the... That's the point I'm making. Mm. He's not above the law. He has no immunity. Mm. He should be subjected to the law. Well, this is this is a conversation that is sure to rage on in the days to come. Of course. Mr. Ejiofor, I want to thank you so much for coming on the program this morning and sharing your insights with us. Thank you. Standing by with me has been Mr. Mike Ejiofor, a former director with the State Security Service. And this is where we bring this edition of Sunrise Daily to a close. I wish you all a wonderful day ahead. I am Ajuri Ngilale. I'm Chamberlain Ustaw. I'm Neil Taibbi. Enjoy the rest of your day. The views and opinions expressed by guests on this program are those of the maker and do not necessarily reflect the views, opinions and endorsement of Channels Television.